we are with the Orange Juice blog and an Orange Juice exclusive. We have Vice Presidential Candidate for the Libertarian Party, Mr. Wayne Allen Root, here hey, with nice us today. To nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Pleasure to be here. And uh, I just wanted to uh, start out by saying that uh, recently we had an article on our blog about how we're a very libertarian-leaning county with a uh, very Republican, but we have a libertarian newspaper. And I understand you used to be a Republican and you're now VP candidate for the Libertarian Party. Could you just talk to us a little bit about how you came about that transformation? Sure. Uh, you know, it's funny because I just got off an airplane from Las Vegas to come here. Guy sitting next to me was a uh, Orange County, uh, Newport Beach physician, a plastic surgeon, a very prestigious one, and he's a huge Republican, and we spent an hour talking politics, and by the time we got off the airplane, I never embarrassed people, I would never say to someone, you know, you're voting for me now, I just said, you know, great to meet you, pleasure, and he said to me, you got my vote, you got my wife's vote, you got all my friends' vote, I'm going to talk to everybody about you, send you a contribution, I think the most natural thing in the world is for a Republican to move over to the Libertarian Party, because I think the Republican Party has a terrible rift in it. Uh, well, there's a couple things, first of all, as a fiscal conservative, which I've been my whole life, um, not just a libertarian, but a fiscal conservative, meaning I want smaller government, I want lower taxes, I want less spending by government, it's pretty obvious why the Republican Party is failing. You know, they say they want smaller government, they say they want lower spending, but the reality is when George W. Bush got elected, uh, he, didn't, he didn't walk the walk, he talked the talk, but he didn't actually carry through on any of it. To the contrary, the most big spending, uh, big government, Republican or president of any kind in modern political history. So it's very easy to leave the Republican Party when you realize that it's one thing what they say at election time, it's another thing what they actually do. If you really believe in Barry Goldwater's principles, meaning smaller government, less spending by government, if you really believe that, you can't be a Republican anymore. You couldn't possibly support George W. Bush. Second of all, there's a rift in the GOP, and that rift is the libertarian-oriented fiscal conservatives like me who social issues are not a big thing and the people who are religious that think that social issues are everything. And that's an easy rift that causes someone to move over to the Libertarian Party because I am fiscally conservative, but socially very moderate. Um, socially, I just believe in personal freedom, just like I believe in economic freedom. I think a Libertarian diverts from the GOP in that we believe in freedom for everybody, not just economic freedom, freedom in your bedroom, freedom from government telling you what to do with your own body, freedom from government telling you what you can watch on TV, freedom from government telling you what you can watch on your computer, whether you can play poker on your own computer in your own bedroom with your own money. Can you imagine a government that's so big and so meddling and so big brother that they actually think they have a right to tell you what games to play on your computer? If that's all they've got to do in a world with wars in Iraq and wars around the globe and starvation and all the terrible things in the world, healthcare crisis, immigration crisis, if all they can think about is whether people can play poker on their computer with their own money in their own bedroom, not hurting anybody else in the world, their neighbor doesn't even know they're doing it, in the age of the internet, there's something wrong. And who was it that stopped you from playing poker on your computer? The Republican Party. Bill Frist and Goodlatte, the congressman from uh, Virginia, a Republican, and Kyle, the senator from Arizona, a Republican, uh, Leach, the congressman from Iowa, those are the biggest uh, anti-gambling proponents in the country, and they're all Republican. They claim to be for smaller government. They're liars. They're for big government. They're big brother. All right. Now, um, I'd like to highlight some of the major issues that really hit home in Orange County as a okay. uh, mortgage crisis. So you think that's a major issue, poker. <laughs> now that's a major issue. I'm just kidding with you. But, no. but, but having said that, everywhere I go, every event I go to, when I mention the word poker, it's a, every guy in the room comes up to me and they all feel the need to whisper, I play poker all the time. <laughs> you know, it's, it's very funny. You know, the amount of men that play poker and are angry that it got banned is just humongous. Having said that, of course, the mortgage crisis yeah, is, our, is a much more important thing. Quick fact, our county seat is basically ground zero. We, we have so many foreclosures. There. I know. I was just saying on the way in from the airport to uh, the gentleman who drove me, Matthew, that you know it seems to me from what I've read and heard, uh, Riverside County and Las Vegas, where I'm from, are, are really the mortgage mm -hmm. epicenter of this crisis. And uh, Vegas is leading the country in foreclosure. It's even worse than Riverside. Mm -hmm. and, and all I would say about this mortgage crisis is that it's government that caused it in the first place. Government gets us in every mess in this whole country. It's always government's fault because they meddle in areas they don't belong. Let the free market do its thing. Government, for the last 30 years, since the Reinvestment Act of 1977, and then they pushed even harder over the last uh, uh, Clinton administration, the Bush administration, government tried to encourage banks to give loans to people who were poor so everyone could enjoy homeownership. Which, I understand, it's a great idea that everyone should be a homeowner, and if you're a homeowner, you'll take care of your community, and you'll participate in the community, and you'll 
you know, have more roots in that community. I understand the theory. Government always tries to do the right thing. I, I believe Bush thought he was doing the right thing in Iraq too, but that didn't work out too well either. Government makes bad decisions. Government thought they were doing the right thing with ethanol. Disaster that's caused worldwide food shortages and price spikes and inflation and hasn't lowered the price of gas, as we all can see. So government always makes the wrong choice. And government said uh, people who are rich are getting houses and people who are middle class are owning houses. We gotta make sure that everyone can own a house. So let's encourage banks to automatically loan to anybody who wants to own a house. That's what caused this crisis. People who had never owned in their lives and have only rented that couldn't afford to own were encouraged, almost, almost forced with a smile by bankers, take the loan, take it please, it's got a start rate that's so low you can't lose. And, and what we've got now is a disaster of epic proportions because those people couldn't afford to pay the property taxes, the insurance on the house, or the actual mortgage once the price went up. It's a disaster. And so I say if government had never been involved in the first place, we wouldn't have this problem. Now government says we can solve the problem. Let's back Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Let's cost the taxpayers a few billion dollars. You know, as an old senator once said, billion here, billion there, pretty soon you got real money. And so <laughs> government just screws everything up and they, they, here's the thing. You know, I'm from Vegas. You know what the difference is between Vegas and Washington, D.C.? In Vegas, the drunks gamble with their own money. <laughs> the problem with government is they're playing games with your money and my money. It's very easy to play games with someone else's money. And, you know, look at Ted Stevens in Alaska. Yeah. You know, do you know they named the Anchorage Airport after him? It's the Ted Stevens Airport? That was <laughs> Yeah, well, they did. That's not a joke. The Vegas one was a joke. That one's serious. They actually named the airport after him. And here's a guy that brought all the bacon home to Alaska. So they named the airport after him. Well, theoretically, if somebody is a congressman in Riverside, everyone in Riverside puts pressure on him or her, bring home the bacon, get us a new bridge, get us money for new schools. And the more that congressman does, the more of a hero they are. Now they name libraries after him, they name the bridge after him. But see, that's just encouraging the ruination and the bankruptcy of the entire federal government. Every congressman has the same pressure. What, in reality, what congressmen should be doing is they all should be watching out for all of our money. They shouldn't be just fighting for their district's money. They should be watching out with tight purse strings for all of us. And unfortunately, it doesn't happen. You know, the, the way the system works is you are encouraged as a politician and you are rewarded by being reelected year after year uh, by, by bribing the electorate, by giving them more bridges, giving them more schools, bridges to nowhere, things they don't even need, you know, by creating more jobs in the district. But you know what? If you created less and you lowered their taxes, private enterprise would create five times more jobs than government ever could. Let me give you my best example.